We are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us. Phone lines open 737-7587 or if you'd like to message us on uh, Facebook as well. We're on Facebook right now at uh, newschannel5.com. Our guest is News Channel 5 legal analyst Nick Leonardo. And uh, Nick, this is a, a story that uh, I had done with you um, I think a couple of weeks ago about a, a controversial um, piece of legislation proposed by one of the state lawmakers um, which I think maybe expands the, the use of force if it were to pass the use of force and uh, is there's been reaction to it uh, that day I talked to you and I talked to another attorney who actually supports the idea I think the NAACP has come out with some strong words against this um, do you want to revisit that for us and remind uh, folks first and I can if you don't have it in front of you but uh, what this uh, this bill would do yes uh, so I fall on the side of the NAACP without doubt but this is some crazy piece of legislation right-wing legislation that allows and in the, in the, in the person who's proposing it is a legislator out of Houston County uh, that allows people to to use deadly force if you believe that property is being stolen yeah, okay if someone's stealing anything. and so deadly force I means you could literally shoot someone in the back and, and I believe the way that the statute was worded is that if you thought it was a piece of personal property that uh, was something that you were unable to replace uh, that you're allowed to use that deadly force and of course we don't have that in Tennessee we don't have that in most of our states and of course um, you know what if you have somebody who's just a uber eats driver that's dropping off food or what if it's uh, somebody who's an unmarked card working for Amazon that's dropping something off um, you know that's a bill would allow you to shoot that person if you thought that that person was stealing something. And if you look at the Ahmad Arbery case down in Georgia, you remember mm -hmm. the young man was, was just jogging and, and, and had gone into a, a house that they were building. There was nothing to take and he didn't have any, he didn't take anything. But in this particular set of circumstances, uh, if you don't like Mr. Arbery, then you can just shoot him because you think that he's out here, um, uh, you know, stealing. And so again, I think this is a knee jerk, right wing, crazy response to protest, Black Lives Matter, movement and and it's just really it's one of the things that's embarrassing about the state of Tennessee quite frankly Nick. Okay and I, I think I can tell you and you just touched on it where I think this came from and it stemmed from uh, earlier this year of course when they had the protests and the rallies where they ended up doing some looting down about along second and broad okay so here's a scenario where and I can tell you there are people watching this show right now that will agree with this even though I understand what you're saying Let's say, okay, there's an individual who's in his, his boot, boot store on 2nd and Broad, and these, this gang comes and breaks down the windows and is in there grabbing boots, okay, and is going to rob him of his business, and, his, and he pulls the gun and says, stop right there, stop taking this, and they look at him, and then they turn with the boots to run out the store and just ignore him, okay? Now, at that point, you know, there's, you're supposed to use deadly force to protect yourself, but at that point, when he's holding the gun on him, they say, he goes, stop, stop taking my stuff, stop damaging my store, and they just laugh at him and turn and run. There are people out there going to say, it's just fine if he wants to plug them in the back as they run away. <laughs> I guarantee you, there's people that are going to say, that is just fine. Now, I understand why it's not. Again, this is a property crime, and that person is not shooting because he feels his life is in danger at that moment anymore, but this guy's taking off on it. I'm not saying that's right, but I guarantee you, and I've heard from people who say, you know what, at this point, we're tired of them laughing and saying whatever and running off with our stuff. We're going to shoot them. That's, well, where, I mean, that, that's where that comes from. That's where it comes from. Well, and I absolutely agree. And I don't agree with theft. And I don't agree with looting or anything like that. But I mean, if you want to be judge, jury, and executioner, then you need to live under right. President Putin, President Ahmadinejad. Okay, because that's not where we are in America. Uh, and that's why we have police force, quite frankly. And in your scenario, if you put a gun on somebody and they didn't have a deadly weapon and they took off and and, and ran and you shot them in the back. You're going to be in trouble now if you were to you know to, to tackle them if you were to use some sort of non-lethal force in order to stop them i think you would be okay to do that but to just kill somebody over a 500 hundred dollar pair of boots uh you know it, that's just that's not where we are in america and that's not part of our evolving standards of decency uh and again the police that's why we have police force it's their job to apprehend these people but i think you can use non-lethal force uh, in order to, to protect property. I don't think that's a, a problem at all, but it, it, this bill allows you just to shoot somebody because you perceive that they're, that they're stealing, perceive that they're stealing, not that they actually have stolen anything. You think they are. Yeah, it is interesting when I think about this and all the cases and the law, the way it sets. Just imagine how many times there have been cases where an individual wakes up and hears a prowler in his house or, or, or out in the garage and goes out and says, uh, hey, stop, freeze right where you are. 
and puts the gun on them as they're walking down the driveway with the items and the guy surrenders. Really, under the law, if the guy just looks at him and says, whatever, and takes off, I, I guess you're not supposed to shoot him, right, at that point. Now, the, no, the, not, the homeowner might shoot him anyway, so they do surrender, but how many times do they surrender? And I wonder, do they realize if they just keep running, if they're not armed and they're not a threat to this person, that technically that person's not allowed to shoot him? Well, that's exactly right, but it's important to point out this, that uh, in Tennessee, we have a statute on point that says if a person's committing a felony on someone else's property, uh, that they can't sue if they get injured. Okay, mm -hmm. so they, so there's civil protection. So I mean, I think if you blended both of these together, if you shot someone in the leg, you know, they might, I doubt that you would be charged, if, you know, for that, if they were doing something of that nature, but you sure couldn't be sued. But if you killed them, you're charged with murder. Yeah, it's interesting. and you're right. The, we do have the castle doctrine as well that applies to both your home and your car where you can use deadly force again if someone's breaking in and you feel in fear along those lines. Well, I, I don't know. I, I, I know that's a, a piece of legislation that uh, got some attention because of its controversy. I don't know that that has much of a chance of passing, but, you know, it's probably not going to be the last time something like this is proposed. But again, I think... No. Go ahead. But see how many votes it gets. I bet it makes it out of committee. See how many votes it gets. Yeah. Tennessee, pay attention and see how many votes that gets. Yeah, and it's because, like I said, um, I think it resonates with some folks, but they need to stop and consider a moment uh, what that may mean to, to anyone, including themselves, in a circumstance that maybe is misinterpreted. And then you get shot because of, you know, people will be more likely to say, I'll use the weapon. Well, I understand, hey, hey, understand well, self-defense completely. Don't, don't get me wrong in the right to bear arms to protect yourself. No problem with that at all. It's just you want to make sure it's, it's legal. But what if you weren't stealing? And what if the person thought you were pulled a gun on you, and then you in turn, as a lawful citizen, you have a gun, you pulled and shot the person that thought that you were stealing? I mean, see the mess you get into with that? Yeah, yeah, there can be some real tricks along those lines. Just in, in terms of wrapping things up then, Nick, um, as far as things stand just with our courts, um, do you anticipate, and I know you follow this very closely, the Supreme Court tightening or loosening you know some of the restrictions that are in place in the coming month month and a half specifically I, I, I think the real key to all of this is going to be a successful vaccine don't you think so maybe things start loosening up and hopefully getting better by spring of next year with regard to the courts yeah I, I would believe so I would think by spring I mean the, the thought is is that people will have you know access to the vaccine it'll be at you know almost every CVS or every Walgreens and people that want it uh, can actually go out and get the vaccine. And I think that's when we'll see things loosen. The Supreme Court did another order about a month ago, and it was kind of a, a shot across the bow, slapping some of these uh, smaller counties saying, folks, look, we've already told you we favor, you know, electronic hearings. Okay, we favor Zoom hearings. And I've had trials on uh, using this technique right here. Uh, I don't care for it, but again, at least the wheels of justice are able to turn. So I would think by March or April that they would relax uh, a whole lot of these uh, conditions. Gotcha. Nick, thanks so much for joining us. It's great seeing you, my friend. And uh, have, have a very, very Merry Christmas. And I'm sure I'll see you between now and then, all right? Happy holidays. All right, happy holidays. Good talking to Nick Leonardo, a great lawyer and a good friend. Listen, we'll take a break uh, when we come back. Programming note about tomorrow, right after yeah, this. Stay with us.